IB Nation, everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Irish Breakdown Podcast. That's Trevor Trowbridge. I'm Brian Driscoll. Bill Bender's going to start join us later. And Trev, we have a lot to talk about today because we are going to kind of put a final bow on this Notre Dame versus Navy matchup. Big one on Saturday. It's one of five, I believe, five top 25 matchups this weekend. And one of the more intriguing ones, in my opinion, because of the implications of you don't see in a lot of these matchups where both teams are necessarily in the college football playoff hunt, if we're being honest. I mean, it, and maybe potentially a win could vault some of those teams in there. But when you look at some of these matchups, Oregon versus Illinois, Illinois, highly unlikely, Missouri, Alabama, the, you know, those teams are both going to be in a tough spot getting in. Alabama could potentially get in. Missouri's in trouble. Texas Vandy, Vandy, great story. Not a playoff team. You know, LSU was Texas A&M. There's, there's playoff implications for both teams. And the loser is not necessarily out in either case because here's the great thing about that matchup. They're both undefeated in the SEC. They both have a loss, but both of their losses were at a conference. Notre Dame beat A&M and then USC beat LSU. So, uh, that one is there. And then, of course, this one with Notre Dame and Navy, where both teams have a shot to make the college football playoff. Notre Dame is an at-large and Navy potentially as the group of five, uh, top group of five teams. So a lot at stake, Trevor. We broke it down the last couple of days. Today, you and I are going to go over the keys to victory, and then we are going to make our score predictions. And then uh, around 2.15 or so, Bill Bender will join me, and we're going to spend the next hour breaking down the big games from this weekend. Uh, he will have to get out a little bit early because he's got to interview a Hall of Famer today. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little hurt. I'm a little hurt. So just because the Baseball Hall of Famer wants to meet with him, he's going to have to end the show a little bit early. That's what I said, man. Um, <laughs> I feel unloved. Uh, but it's going to be fun, man. This is going to be a great, great weekend of college football, in my opinion. And, of course, this game in East Rutherford, New Jersey at MetLife Stadium between number 12 Notre Dame and number 24 Navy is a big part of that. So let's, Trevor, uh, uh, well, first of all, man, are, I mean, are you ready? You ready for this game, man? You ready for this? Oh, show? man. I, listen, man, I don't care how old I get. I'm I'm always giddy when it starts to approach game day. It's my favorite day of the week. And, and, and getting to do work with you guys and being around IB Nation just kind of helps Kind of scratch some of those itches as much as I'm sure my wife loves to hear me talk about Notre Dame football ad nauseum. I'm, I'm sure that uh, she she doesn't mind a break from from now and again. But I'm excited, man. This is a sneaky good slate of college football this yeah. weekend. It really yeah. is. It doesn't have that marquee, you know, Georgia, Texas, you know, Bama, Georgia thing. But it's a good weekend of college football. And I am happy that Notre Dame plays at noon because, one, I don't have to wait all day. I don't have that awkward, you know, I'm, well, it's one fifteen. Notre Dame doesn't play for two hours and 15 minutes, but I'm ready to go. And there's going to be some good football on for us to watch at the end of the day. Just so y'all know, I'm preparing y'all now. This is going to be me and Trevor during a lot of the postgame show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm listening. I'm not watching the game, I swear. I, I, I'm, I'm listening to, oh, oh, you know, yeah. that's going to be us on Saturday. Um <laughs> I'm I'm excited for it. So without further ado, Trevor, let's get rocking and rolling. So Irish fans, we're going to do keys to victory now. And we're going to start on offense. And, and for a lot of reasons, we start on offense. Number one, it's just kind of offense, defense, how we go. I'm an offensive guy. You're an offensive guy. Uh, it's just, it's just how we're going to do it. But it's also it, kind of jokingly, but also because this side of the, this matchup is so important in this game. I mean, we've talked a lot about the Navy option and, and how they got to stop that and how different it is and do all these things. And so we're going to dive into uh, the keys to victory. And you know what? Starting fast is not a key to victory this week, Trevor said no one ever. So <laughs> that's key. Number one, right? Obviously yeah. uh, is starting fast. And it, it 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 carries weight every week for different reasons. And this week, it's as important as it will ever be in a game, in my opinion, because of the way that Navy plays, but also because of the way Notre Dame plays. Because Notre Dame is also not a team that necessarily, um, you know, uh, but I, they're not a team that runs a ton of plays, Trevor. I mean, we've talked a lot about you know, where Navy ranks in, in plays, Notre Dame only ranks 91st in plays run. 
So these are two teams that don't get a lot of possessions every game. They tend to run the clock. Notre Dame has been a team that that does the long drive thing a little bit more than maybe we'd like. So possessions are likely going to be limited in this game. Neither one of these teams are high turnover teams, at least haven't been coming into this game. And so you're talking about a situation, Trevor, where you may only get five, six, at the most seven possessions. You got to be kind of perfect when you're playing a team that can score the way the Navy does. And even with your defense as good as it is, if Navy gets 21 points, you might have to score on 60% of your drives to match and they have to all be touchdowns to match that 21 points. And so uh, that's sort of the bind that Navy puts you in, Trevor. So starting fast is huge for this week. We'll, we'll, there's some other reasons why, but that right there alone, Trev, is you you are going to have to be as efficient as possible with your scores. And this is not the kind of team that you want to be coming back from or, or be falling behind from. Yeah, absolutely. The Navy and Notre Dame from a turnover perspective are both very efficient offenses. So they don't give their the opposing team that they're going up against many opportunities to steal away possessions, right? In addition to starting fast, and I'm glad you touched on it, there's not there's a lot of times where people here start fast and they think about, all right, well, let's just come off from bombs. Now, again, would I be upset if that happened? I mean, no, like given the given the current state. But I finally go 75 over the top to Chris Mitchell on play one. I'm not going to be upset about that. That's what I'm saying. If this if this is a Notre Dame 2015 USC start to the game, I will not be upset about that at all. We watch Chris Mitchell take the top off of defense. You know, I, I would love that, but Notre Dame is a very rhythm based offense, and they are a very once they get into a groove, they stick in that groove for a while, and it it's at least for a quarter, quarter and a half, and in a game where you are going to have limited possessions against a team like Navy, it's imperative because you don't want to sit back and look at the box score. It's like, oh, gosh, they had six drives, maybe seven, depending on like how the, you know, if they defer, they receive to start the half. They might be able to steal a possession at the end of the game there and kind of go two for one sort of deal. But, you know, in a game where Navy is really good at controlling time of possession because they have that ability, they just haven't had to because they're a very explosive offense. Notre Dame needs to make every single one count, and starting fast has to be top of mind. Efficiency is huge. I still will go back to also, Trevor, the notion that confidence is still a big thing for this team. Like, it's still huge. They are still a team that when things start to go south, they tend to just snowball. We saw that on Saturday. You know, I mean, uh, this last Saturday against Georgia Tech where, you know, they weren't necessarily rolling early, but once they kind of got hot, they were, they were, they were going. And then the minute they kind of started to sputter, they just sputtered for the rest of the game. We saw that against Louisville where they start fast and then fumble happens. And then they just kind of sputter the rest of the game a little bit, you know, just kind of toy with Louisville for the rest of the game. When they come out fast, and, and again, fast being, you know, a good three, four possessions, they've tended to roll with, unless something bad happens, the Louisville game be an example. But, you know, against Stanford, they started fast, gained some confidence, and then just steamrolled Stanford for the rest of the game, right? Against Louisville, they they started fast and, and really just took it to Louisville early in the game. You know, the turnover obviously stunted those things a little bit. When this team gets going, they can be hard to stop. But they're also a team that, you know, you stop them on, you know, two or three of the first four possessions and then three or four possessions. And then all of a sudden they kind of, you know, they they kind of start getting a little bit, uh, we're not sure how this is going to go. This team is still one that has a little bit, in my opinion, of a fragile psyche on offense. Uh, I think the defense is fine. I mean, the defense has shown we can struggle early and then we're going to figure out and shut you down and you better score early. Because it's like if you don't score in the first quarter against Notre Dame, you're not scoring. I mean, that's kind of how it's gone with a lot of teams, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, except maybe you might get a score on their backup defense, you know what I mean? I mean, Stanford scored in the first quarter, didn't score again. Georgia Tech scored in the first quarter, didn't score again until the Notre Dame put their backups in the game and still needed a lot of plays to get there, you know what I mean? So, you know, th- those are, those are, um, you know, just that's that's been the thing, but this is not a team where you can fall behind and play so that's why keys to victory or number one trevor is is 
it's always it's always start fast, but this week it is huge. Here's a key to starting fast, Trevor. And we spent a lot of time this week talking about the Navy run game. And it's really good. I mean, Trevor, it's the number four rushing team in the country in yards sure per game, right? It's the number, what is it, four, six team in the country in yards per carry. It's six yards per carry. But you know who's number 10 at just a 0.1 yards per game behind Navy? Notre Dame. And yes, Navy with their option is going to is ranks fourth in the country in rushing yards. Notre Dame ranks seventh in the country in rushing yards on the season. Uh, 17th, excuse me. They rank seventh in games against power five only teams this season. And when you look at this matchup, running the football is just as important as for Navy, for Notre Dame, as it is for Navy. I believe this is a game where, yes, we'll talk a little bit about the pass game, but this is a game where Notre Dame absolutely has to dominate on the ground. And they should, Trevor, when you consider what they're facing, because as you pointed out in, in your opponent preview article, and as I wrote about today as well at irishbreakdown.com, this is a Navy defense that is not good against the run. They rank 91st in the country. I think they were 92nd earlier in the week, but I wonder if the games that were played last night might have impacted that. Maybe they moved a spot, but they were 90, they're 90 they 91st now. That may have been where they were. But when you look at their last four games, Trevor, they've given up 202.8 yards per game in their last four games. And that's not fueled by one team having like a huge performance against them. Memphis did run the ball on them, but everybody's run the ball on them in the last four games. And, and you look at the numbers, uh, yes, they've run the ball well, but Memphis went for 274, UAB went for 192, Air Force went for 158, and Charlotte went for 187. And UAB's only had one other game where they rushed for anywhere close to that. That was against Alcorn State. They went for 192 against Navy. Their next highest against an FBS team is 119. UAB is not a good rushing team. Uh, Air Force has really struggled to run the football this year. Uh, they've had a couple games higher, but it's about on line with what their average is this season, where, where, where they got held to. And then you look at the Charlotte team. They had a 311-yard performance against East Carolina. There's 187 against Navy's. their second-best performance. Their next closest is 137. They've been held under 100 yards by three opponents, including Rice, North Carolina, and Gardner-Webb. This is not a good rushing defense. Notre Dame needs to take advantage and dominate this game. And honestly, Trevor, give Navy a little bit of their own medicine. Okay, we're going to come out and score fast. We're going to run the ball. We're going to control the clock. And we're our defense is going to stop you a couple times. And now you are going to have to get out of what you try to do defense or offensively because now you've got to play catch up against us and we're able to go on an eight-play drive, 10-play drive, 12-play drive because we're going to smack you in the mouth we're going to push you off the ball, and oh, by the way, you may think you have us, and number four or number 24 or number 13 or number 20 or number 21, anyone that's on scholarship in our backfield can hammer Navy for a big play, or 22, all of them, but especially those top two, Trev. So this is a big one for me. It's a statement moment for the Notre Dame offensive line, in my opinion, more than anything else. We know the backs can go off. Will they be able to win in the trenches against a small, undersized, but but gritty, penetrating, great technique, defensive front seven against Navy? That's going to be key. The Notre Dame offensive line has a chance to roll in this game, but will they do it? That's going to be a key to victory for Notre Dame. Opening up the run game is going to allow Notre Dame to dictate the tempo of this football game from a hole, which is something that Navy does a really good job at and what they've done a really good job at through their first six games of the season, right? And then, and I think you hit the nail on the head. It, it, it does rely on the offensive line. Jadarian Price and Jeremiah Love have proven time and time again that if they just see a certain amount and enough carries, they will just break one of them because they're that explosive of a running back. To me, this conversation starts getting, being geared towards having an efficient run game, being able to rip off six, seven, five, four, 
11, things like that. Now, again, in the same light of the passing game, I'm not going to be upset if they once again rip off another 50-yard touchdown run. We'll never be upset about that, right? But Notre Dame has the opportunity from a run game standpoint to really open it up against this Navy defense because looking at their schedule, their last three games, Louisville, Stanford, and Georgia Tech all had relatively solid run defenses. They might not be ranked in the top 10 in terms of limiting yards per game, but they had a stout run defense. We all talked about what Stanford did to Clemson's rushing offense. That was averaging over 220 yards a game going into the Stanford game. They rushed for like 150, I think, around that mark. So Notre Dame hasn't really faced a defense yet in this stretch where they've been able to open up the run game. And when they have had the ability to open up the run game, we see what that looks like. We saw what they did against Miami of Ohio and what they did against Purdue. So yes, as much as the pass game needs to be a factor, which I know we're going to get into discussing here in a little bit, the run game, it it almost feels like the run game recently has been almost a complement to the Irish passing game. And they have the opportunity again to go out here and say, Hey, listen, we're starting to open things up in the passing game. Don't forget, we still have 13, we still have four, we have 24, 20, 21, 22. Anybody that we put in the backfield is going to be able to run an efficient game for us. So I agree. Running the football is an absolute must on Saturday. I'm also very curious, Trevor, how Notre Dame utilizes Riley Leonard's legs in this game. Mm -hmm. Because I have a feeling that Navy is going to do what the last few teams have done and and really gear their game plans towards stopping the backs. And does Notre Dame, like, they haven't really ran him a ton on designed runs in recent games. I mean, if you look at his numbers in recent games, I think he's had, I think in two of the games he's had over 10 carries. I think he had over 10 carries against, against uh, Georgia tech, but a lot of those were scrambles and he didn't have a lot of designed runs outside of the goal line in short yardage. Yeah. He had the third and one conversion. He had the fourth down conversion and he had two goal line runs outside Mm -hmm. of that. He didn't run the ball a ton. He had the one quarterback draw and then another quarterback counter. Then and then you look at the previous game against uh, against Stanford. He carried the ball six times. I think all but like one of those, maybe two, was a scramble. Mm-hmm. They weren't designed runs. And then obviously he ran the ball a decent amount against Louisville. But Notre Dame's had a buy since then, and then he didn't do it. Uh, you know, is this a game where he kind of gets back to being more of a focal point because of how Navy defends Notre Dame or not? I mean, that's going to be another interesting part. Uh, Does Notre Dame use Riley Leonard as a counter to what Navy does, or do they try to then be proactive with Riley Leonard, do some design quarterback runs in hopes of gashing Navy early, thinking that Navy, you know, be pro, hey, we know they're going to crash. So we're going to do something with Riley Leonard early to try to get him to break a big run. Now you're on your heels. Then we counter with Jeremiah and Jadari and those kind of guys. That's another potential option for Notre Dame in this game, too, Trevor, is we're going to use Riley early get Navy thinking, oh, shoot, you know, this is a Riley Leonard game. And then next thing you know, they're doing some things with their running backs to to take advantage of that, their, their play action, take advantage of that. I'm very curious how they're going to incorporate Riley into the run game this week, which we haven't seen them do as much in recent games. Let me ask you this, because I'm – Especially with the bye coming up. Yeah. I, I wanted to say, especially with the bye coming up where he can rest. Yeah, for a week. 100%. 100%. So let me, let me ask you this, because – We've talked all week about how the clear, and this is the case for most weeks. This isn't just because it's Navy on Saturday. But Notre Dame has a very clear-cut advantage from an athletic and from a skill standpoint going into this matchup. Notre Dame has used a lot of 21 personnel in the past, but it hasn't necessarily been what we as fans thought it would be with 4 and 24 on the field at the same time. Do you think in the spirit of kind of giving Navy a taste of their own medicine, we see a lot of 21 personnel with Jadarian and Aeneas on the field at the same time or with, you know, four and 24 on the field at the same time? What do you think? I love where your head's at right now. That would be such an F you move. We're going to put two backs. We're going to put three runners on the field against Mm -hmm. you. We're going to kind of give you a taste of your own medicine a little bit. I'd love to see 21 and 20 personnel in this game. We actually saw a little bit 20 against Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 20 personnel being two backs, zero tight ends, three receivers. That would be, you know, that would be very interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. And again, it's not going to be your bread and butter. This is what we're doing all game. Sure. But something is a wrinkle and then, you know, do some things, throwing the ball out of that, you know, put Jeremiah outside, run your slot fade to him from there. 
you know, do some things where you run some screens to him on the perimeter. You get him going on crossers. You know what I mean? Some things like that. Like that would be fascinating as you're in, you know, heck even do an RPO to him where you're running at the Jadarian. I'd love to see some stuff like that. I don't know that I would do like glances to him or, you know, like an RPO with a now screen or a bubble an RPO with a slot fade concept out of it. Something like that with, with Jadar, with, with Jeremiah outside. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. we're seeing Mike Denbrock get a little bit more creative with different ways to get his tight ends and running backs the ball. You know, we saw the couple screens against Stanford with the running back. We saw the 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 screen concept to get Mitchell Evans the ball on a couple times. Uh, it would be really interesting to see how Notre Dame kind of gives Navy a a little bit of a okay. Let's see how you like it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Let's see how you like having to deal with all this kind of stuff with orbit motions and those type of things. And part of me says like, you know, Navy is a defense that's seen that a lot, but will they have seen that a lot from Notre Dame? And right. will they have seen that with the speed that the Notre Dame backs I, are going to put on the field? That was my thought exactly. It's like they might have seen a little bit of misdirection. The, the the play against Georgia Tech that got me thinking about that is they had a play where they faked a bubble screen and then ran like a halfback slip screen backside. And you do something like you line Jeremiah Love up in the slot, you know, quick little fake RPO glance over at him. Then you have Jadarian Price with a, a backside screen set up there. It's just, again – in the spirit of doing anything that you can to get your playmakers in space, I'm all for seeing that on Saturday. I just It was one of those things where I thought, you know what, this is a game where the scales are really tipped in Notre Dame's favor from an athletic standpoint and seeing just one of the, you know, 20, 24, 4 in the backfield, just it's some combo of that, you know, I think would be really interesting to see. You know, when you look at the numbers last year, Trevor, the Notre Dame running back, the top four rushers for Notre Dame last year accounted for 24 rushing touchdowns. In seven games, Riley Leonard, Jeremiah Love, Jadarian Price, and Aeneas Williams have combined for 21 touchdowns. So, you know, and the thing is, we talk a lot about Jeremiah Love, how great he is, and he is. He is number three among the top three rushers in yards per carry at six. But Jared Darian's at six, seven, Riley's at six, one, and Jeremiah's at six, six. He's their number one rusher yards wise, and he's number one in attempts, but he is number three in yards per, per attempt. Which is not as I mean, he's averaging six yards a carry. I was about to say, you know what man, I mean? like that—that <laughs> like, that is crazy to say that the third most efficient runner on yeah, Notre Dame's team right. is getting six yards a carry. For for context, Kyron Williams' best season at Notre Dame, he was at five point three, and that was in twenty twenty with that great O line. He was at five point three. Your third guy this year is at six 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 point zero. It's literally six point zero zero. Riley's at 6.08, and Jadarian's at 6.71. Aeneas is at 6.3. Kedron Young's at 5.8. <laughs> I mean, so it's just like, it's freaking ridiculous how good this team is at running back. But the key, Trevor, is not them, right? The key is Anthony Knapp, Sam Pendleton, Pat Coogan, Rocco Spindler, Emil Wagner, Mitchell Evans. Eli Raritan, Cooper Flanagan. That's going to be the key. If And we've seen it every single game. When the line blocks well, the running backs go off. I've never – I mean, there's a play here or play there, but there's not been a game this year. I'm like, you know, line played really well, but them running backs were not hitting holes. And the running – like I've had this debate with people in about the 2017 Georgia game. The Notre Dame defense offensive line played a lot better than people give it credit for. You have to only rush for – yeah, because Josh Adams wasn't hitting the holes that were there. I mean, there was a play. They ran like a the G scheme, and if Josh Adams follows Mike McGlinchey outside, he might go. I mean, it was like – and he just pops it in the – and you're like, what the heck are – you know what I mean? Uh, this is – that's not been the case with this group. If you give them room, they're going to go. We saw it against Georgia Tech last week. Second play of the game, I think, or second drive of the game. The safety comes down. He's in the hole. I got you. Right, the kid that, with the dreads that you the, the that you were talking about had played a really good game, and he did. It's right there in the hole. It's him and Jadarian, and Jadarian barely moved and made him just whiff. Right, Jadarian got him again early. The guy comes down in the hole. He's ready to tackle Jadarian at like two yards downfield. Jadarian's like, you know, I juked you last time. This time I'm running over you. 
and and it was like 23 yard gain you know what i mean or 19 yard gain and and like you said we haven't even seen jeremiah love go off the last few games it's about time for him to kind of get going so but it all comes down to the boys up front can they, can they give you room can they get a push against a defense that's going to be prepared to play against that that's going to be the key now, I wouldn't be surprised if Notre Dame comes out and tries to take, you know, a couple shots or throw the ball to back him off. But I would – this is one of those games I'd like to see them come out right away and establish the ground game early and say, fellas, this is going to be a long day for you. Yep. And you've got a bye week next week to rest up, O-line. I need you guys to give me everything you got, and I need you to play with a tenacity this game against this. So at the end of the day, no one's talking about their run game. They're all talking about our run game. That would be my message if I'm Joe Rudolph and Mike Denbrock this week, Trevor. It really would be. All right, let's keep it rolling, Trev, because we spent a lot of time on that one. Let's get to the next key to victory for the Notre Dame offense. And that is, this is a big one, and this is going to be big for both sides of the ball. But offensively, Trevor, and I'll kick it over to you, third down efficiency is going to be key for this Notre Dame offense, who has largely not been good on third down this season. But you know, I'll just give you a, a, a little statistic here, Trevor. Notre Dame ranks relatively low. We talked, we showed about it yesterday in third down offense, but in their two games where they were over 50%, they've only been over 50% twice on third down all year. And do you know what their points per game average is just on offense points per game? It's not even talking about defensive points per game. You know what their offensive points per game is in those two games? It's 54 points a game. Stanford and in, in mm-hmm. Purdue. Purdue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I look at Notre Dame being successful on third down, I think it's a couple of things. One, you got to get yourself into more favorable third down situations, right? Notre Dame is a very, like I said at the start of the show, a very rhythm-based offense. And they are one of those where if something gets off schedule, they start looking down the barrel at like a second and 10 then they kind of limp their way into getting into like a third and seven, third and eight. So you're kind of third and intermediate looking on, which I think is one of the reasons that get you get it, you as a football team into not favorable third down conversion percentages, right? So within third down efficiency, put yourself in a spot where you can be efficient on third down, right? Put yourself in a position where, and I'm not saying that every first down you gain nine yards again, theme of today not going to be upset if that happens but just put yourself in a spot where you are putting yourself into a third and manageable because keeping drives alive against this navy football team with the way that they have the ability to eat the football i understand whenever i brought that up people bring it well they're not you know that high in time of possession and they don't run that many plays like well it's because they haven't had to but with the type of offense that they have they have the ability to grind out the clock we've watched it in previous Notre Dame Navy games. So be very efficient with your offense in early downs. And once you do get into third and manageable, got to find a way to keep drives alive and keep the ball. You have to keep the ball as much as you can. If you're Notre Dame, be selfish with it. Mm-hmm. Make sure that the other team is not having any opportunities to try to steal any possessions late in the half, late in the quarter, because that's just going to mess up a lot of the rhythm. And the one thing that I like is third down efficiency, especially if the run game is kind of going at it like we thought and think that they will, I think that's going to help out that third down percentage as well. Moving the chains, I mean, the hope is that they don't get into a lot of third downs. Right. And we've seen that before against Navy, where Notre Dame doesn't have a lot of third down opportunities. Last year, Notre Dame only had seven third down opportunities. They converted five of them. I mean, that 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 was very important. Uh, if you go back to the 2022 game, Notre Dame early in the game, dominated on third down didn't get into a lot of them but dominate second half i think they converted one and that's when they sputtered and allowed navy to get back in i don't think they scored once in the second half wasn't it like 35 13 or something like that at halftime i think so and then they in the final score was like 35 32 mm-hmm. and so you know you you couldn't move the change you got into yourself in some bad situations against that against that team uh, they were 53.9 in, in 2021 when they won 34 to 6. In 2019, when they dominated Navy, uh, they went four of nine. A couple of those misses were in the second half. Um, and you know, so you you've got to be you've got to be good on third down because if Notre Dame can be a a big play offense, which I think they can be against Trevor, 
against Navy Trevor and also moves the chains, that's how a route happens. You know what I mean? But I think early on, maybe if the big plays aren't coming, you've got to move the chains because the more you convert first downs, the more chances you have to run plays, the more plays you run, the greater chances you have that Jeremiah Love rips one off. Right? I mean, like the Stanford game is a perfect example, Trevor. Like you go watch Jeremiah, you look at Jeremiah Love's numbers in that game. You know, he, 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 he had five carries for 14 yards at one point in time. But what was his final number? Six carries for 53 yards, 8.8 yards per carry. Why? Because he rips off a 39-yard touchdown run. You know what I mean? Like it's they were stuffing him, stuffing him, stuffing him, stuffing him, touchdown. You know, you look at the Georgia Tech game. I mean, the, the Texas A&M game. He had two runs that covered about 50, uh, 50 – actually had three runs that covered, I think he had a 29-yard run, a 19-yard run, and a and a 21-yard touchdown run. So he had 69 yards on three carries. He finishes the game with 91 yards on 14 carries. AM did a great job that game of stone in the run game, stone in the run game, stone in the run game, boom, big play, right? I mean, that that's what this – and that's what we keep – we've been saying it every week. You don't have to be dominant with all three of these guys in the backfield. You don't. Just give them a crease because if you get love in space and in the 25 yard run he had against the 25 yard catch and run he had against Stanford, he got hit three yards past the line of scrimmage, Trevor. You know what I mean? Like that's what these two kids do. Like I think only a couple of their runs have been just clean Josh Adams 2017 going right through the hole. Nobody touches them. I think it's only been a couple of them that have been that way. Uh, I mean, the touchdown run against Northern Illinois, he hurdled someone. The touchdown runs that – the touchdown run that J- J- Jadarian had against a and he had to make two guys miss in space. The touchdown run that Jer- J- J- uh, Jeremiah had, he kind of broke two tackles as he's getting through the line, got there really cr- uh, tight. You know, the Purdue t- – Purdue was probably the one game where they just didn't – didn't get touched on a couple of those long runs, but even Jadarian seven yard touchdown, he's going to make a guy miss in the backfield. But like, that's what they do is like, you get them in space against one defender. We've yet to see them play a team. Like I said this to a Georgia tech guy. Oh, the tackling was terrible. I was like, you know who else thinks their tackling is terrible against their name. Every team that they've played beforehand, you know what I mean? A&M's probably, A&M's been a pretty good tackling team since the Notre Dame game. Oh yeah. Well, why were they batting against Notre Dame? It's not because of them. It's because number four and number 24 make a lot of people look silly, right? Uh, you know, so they're going to make big plays if you give them enough opportunities. But when Notre Dame's run game is sputtered, it's three and outs, you know, five and outs, six and outs, where they're just not able to get those two backs into a rhythm. The line can't get into a rhythm, and they can't rip off the big plays, and that goes back to being good on third down. When you get there, move the chains, because the more plays you run – the more chance they're going to rip off big plays. Simple as that. And then the final one, Trevor, big plays in the passing game. If Notre Dame can hit a couple of big plays early in the throwing game, I don't think Navy has a chance. Because that's the one thing this offense has not done. I think Notre Dame ranks in the bottom 10, I believe, in most passing plays of over 30 yards. They rank – actually, they're not quite as low as I thought – they're 113th. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's only 16 teams worse than them. I'm not going to mention that uh, how uh, excited I am that uh, Michigan is tied for dead last, but that's a different conversation for a different day. I mean, Michigan's pass offense makes Notre Dame look like, you know, BYU 1990. You know what I mean? But I kid. Uh, but it, when you look at this one, Trevor, I don't. I don't think Riley Leonard needs to throw for 350 yards. I mean, if he does, fine. I, I'll enjoy that 50 point victory. You know, yeah. But he doesn't have to do that this game. I really believe it's it's the dominant run game. But if he can come out early, be good on third down as a thrower, but then hit a couple big plays. And whether that's a go ball, post route, seam, or just getting the ball to somebody in space and then letting them go. Do, I don't care what it is. If they can hit a couple big plays in the pass game. And get that run game going. They're going to be they're going to be good because that's kind of what they did in 2022 against what was a a Navy team that honestly did a pretty good job shutting down Notre Dame's run game, especially in the second half of that game. And so if if Notre Dame can can 
have some success. He ran for 66 yards against Navy two years ago because they just said we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna load the box and stop the run. First half, Notre Dame hit some big plays, got it rolling, got a big lead, and even though they stunk in the second half, that was enough for them to put that game away too far away where Navy couldn't catch up. Notre Dame's offense has the opportunity this week to kind of run up the box score a little bit. I, I personally, based on the way that Navy's defense is put together and based on the amount of athleticism that Notre Dame's offense has, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, you, me, Sean, and Vince are chilling in the postgame show talking about, man, they had minimum three runs of 20 plus and, and three plays through the air of 20 plus, you know, just really honing in on this balanced offense that Mike Denbrock so desperately wants to get to. And that we've seen spurts, you know, Stanford, they were about as balanced as you could have been from a total yardage output. I literally think it was 229 and 229. I think or close to it. So it was it was, it was 229 and then Riley passed for 229. Gotcha. But they actually had because Steve came in and hit hit a ball late and uh um, gotcha. And they finished with 248. Okay. So Steve had a, a couple completions in that game as well. But you 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 you've got the you're in your head, you, you've got it right because that's where Riley was at. Riley was okay. at 229 passing. Okay. And then the offense as a whole finished with 229 rushing, which is yeah. really good, good deal. Good deal. Yeah. And, and and we we've all <laughs> seen balanced. what Notre Dame yeah. looks like when when they're able to run an offense like that. So big plays in the passing game. Again, this doesn't mean that every down you're running four verts at least once or twice in in a series, right? But it's something where Notre Dame kind of I almost want to say, they almost kind of like tease the fans a little bit of hey, we're starting to show that we're getting our guys out in space. Let them in a game like this where they have such a clear athletic advantage. Let them go out and eat in space because they were able to do that against the Georgia Tech defense, who is who is more athletic than Navy's. So give them the opportunity to go make plays in space. That's one beautiful thing as a quarterback is if you're able to throw a 10-yard drag route that ends up going for 45 yards, you just get 45 passing yeah. yards like that. You know, Put yourself in favorable situations like that and let your, let your playmakers go eat. They have done some things the last few weeks throwing the game, throwing game wise, where I'm like, there's some stuff there off of that. Like, can I get a double move? Can I get, you know, like a pump with a, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, and it's like, are you guys going to give us that at some point in time? You know what I mean? So uh, there's stuff there. Mm -hmm. And as much as they throw the quick game, Navy could be susceptible to a, <clears throat> You know what I mean? Uh, some kind of double move. I mean, you ran, you've ran, you've completed about 10 slant plus mm. or glance routes the last couple yep. of weeks. Give me something. Yep. Even if it's like a slant with a, you know, you send your running back out of the, like, that's something they could do is like, you, you know, with the 21 personnel, bang a slant, you know, throw the slants backside and let a running back just kind of quick wheel around it. You pump the slant, let him get vertical, some slant and go. I mean, there's things that they can do. Stop and goes outside. I mean, they run a million stop routes and corners drive on it hard. If Notre Dame, well, here's the key: you got to protect it, right? Yeah. yeah. But if Notre Dame ran some kind of stop and go, it's going to score. I mean, just because they run so many stops and they don't do anything off of that. So, um, it, it, this is a game for that, in my opinion. If yep. you, as long as because Navy's not a great, they're a decent pass rushing team off pressure, but if you can protect the quarterback a little bit. You know, I mean, you could do a – dude, you could do a nine-man protection in that situation. Yeah. And give me it off of a play action for all I care. Run it out of 12 personnel for all I care. You're going to get single high. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Well, I, Lauren and I, we were sitting on the couch watching, and I was explaining to her. I was telling her, I was like, Notre Dame is just – they are they are setting up the slant and go. I feel it. It was when they were running it out of that deuce personnel where they had the tight end on the left, lone receiver split out wide to the left – and a couple times Riley hit the backside slant. And I was just I every single time I watched it happen when they would line up in that formation, I just kept watching that safety on the left hash just kind of keep keep creeping up and creeping up and creeping up. And I was like, that is just begging for a you know, receiver plants on the outside foot, hits the slant hard. You run about three, four yards in, and then you're planting on your right foot and you're taking off up the field. You want to talk about an opportunity for Chris Mitchell to show why he came to South Bend. That's it right there. I mean, get him over the top. I mean, you catch a safety flat footed. He's not able to flip his hips quick enough. It's I, I'm with you, man. There's a lot of things that it feels like is starting to be set up a little bit. Yeah. And I just, man, I, maybe it might be wishful thinking because to your point, it starts up front. Riley has to get at least a second longer of time for that play to develop. 
but man, it just feels like they're they're kind of planting the seeds for something. It does. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for the offensive show, Trevor. Folks, before we go to the defensive show, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Share this podcast. Give us a five-star review. And as always, make sure you are a member of our message board, our Champions Lounge at boards.archbreakdown.com. I put a little little recruiting intel up last night to check out, and uh, you'll want to see that as well. A couple new names on the board, going to be some new visitors uh, for Florida State. I think we should have some have an idea of a couple positions and how they're going to finalize here between now and then. So uh, uh, starting, to, starting to heat up a little bit in what has been otherwise kind of a, a boring, non-eventful you know, recruiting cycle for Notre Dame. So we'll see how they can close. So you want to check that out at boards.archbreakdown.com.